Hi everyone, welcome to Studio Sunday with Robin and Terry. Hello. I hope you've had a great week. I certainly have. I've been on a girls trip to Maui this week <laughs> and just got home last night so I am feeling the pain of reality smacking me right in the face. Okay, and I, oh yeah, well, I'm afraid to ask Terry what he's gotten done. I just walked into the studio for the first time and everything is very well organized. No, I got a lot done. You guys have seen the yeah. sketches. And <laughs> yeah. Started the new book. Oh, I was really hoping you guys could keep him in line. I need some help here. <laughs> <laughs> so, we'll, uh, we'll deal with all that later. Okay. Anyway, uh, so let's get on with it. Right. Our first question is very interesting. Do you think that periodical sales are dead in comics? Why do you still publish them instead of just releasing graphic novels? Uh, well, because I think periodicals are like having a, a regular TV show. You know, you, if you get hooked on a show, there's two ways to watch it, of course. Now you can binge, which would be the trade paperback or the omnibus. But a lot of people still like to watch, have something to look forward to, uh, like, say, every Tuesday night. Or every month they got the new issue of their favorite comic out. It keeps you from having to wait all year for the next installment of a book, right? What if you had to wait a year for the next whatever I'm doing? Um, so that's why I think I think why it's really good. I, li I like having that regular dose of characters that I like and want to visit every month. It's like having your favorite TV show. And if you never know when the next episode's coming out, you kind of just wander away. So um, it's hard to find buyers for the trade sometime, you know. Um, it may take you a while to find that a trade is out. That's why I do it. Well, and as a publisher, uh, it helps get us to the trade paperback money-wise. It brings us income for each individual comic, and then we can it allows us then to publish the trade paperback. But without those uh, individual comics, we would be hard pressed to stay in business. Right. Um, the trade paperback doesn't make up for a year's worth of comic sales. It's just the way it is. Unless you have a huge hit, like Blankets or Kingdom Come. But in the normal world, you know. Yeah, but as indie publishers, we don't have the luxury of getting a, a signing fee or anything like that. We've just got to get it out there. So. Well, that's true. There's no advance in indie publishing. Um, so, economics. So that's just the, the uh, nitty-gritty of comics for us. Mm -hmm. I, I, I wonder if there's an information gap if people in general don't know how the comics, the book industry works. It might be good to explain that sometime. Somebody should explain that. I don't think it's going to be me. <laughs> I don't think it should be me. <laughs> Okay, let's talk about, um, the next question is, how do you feel about other artists drawing your characters? I've seen a lot of Francine's and Kachu's out there. I, I think it's an honor. I mean, that's, that's the best homage that you can get as an artist. So if other people are taking a swipe at it. Um, I've certainly done that to all the characters I like. So yeah, actually, thank you. <laughs> and we've actually had a few uh, readers who have other artists draw your characters because they're so uh, in love with Francine and Kachu that they want to see what the other artists bring to it. I think that's really interesting. Oh, yeah. And it's, it's, sometimes the results are just gorgeous. And, you, and I wouldn't have seen it that way other, if another artist hadn't shown it to me. You know, here's how I see... Francine and Kachu or something, you know, and I, I've kept some of them, uh, and I treasure them. Cool. Last year at Baltimore Comic Con, you were the um, artist in the uh, yearbook that they do every year. Oh, yeah. Uh, because it was your 25th anniversary, mm -hmm. and it was so fun to look back and see how everybody um through your characters, not just Francine and Kachu, but any of his characters. Yeah. There were some amazing um, Motor Girl pieces and Rachel Rising, so it was really fun to see all that. Oh, it's just more than you can ask for. Okay, so that's it for me. I've got to go to bed. <laughs> um, what? Tell us what you're going to draw today. What's your tutorial on today? Um, 
when I go to the shows, um, people are look at the original art and they think, whoa, you hand letter on your art? How do you do that? So I thought maybe we would take a, uh, a few minutes and look at actually how I do that. I'm, how I hand letter a page of uh, five years. So this is going to be a spoiler. You're going to see a page from five years that you may not have read the comic yet. But if you're an artist, you're probably more interested in just seeing how old school lettering works. Because um, I do it by hand. And um, maybe I'm the last one to do it. Here's a T-Rex page right here. <laughs> so I'll show you how we do it. So Okay. Yeah, meet me here. Okay, so I'm going to be uh, showing you a page from five years number nine. So if you're more interested in reading the story without spoilers, you may not want to watch what I do next, but um, you, you probably may not be reading the book in order and you don't care, you just want to know about lettering. So here we go. You have been warned. Okay. Um, this is a page where I have plenty of dialogue and you can see that the first thing I did as I was drawing was I went ahead and I penciled in, you know, the dialogue as I was doing it. And you can see I did a lot of erasing and rewriting um, all the way down in through here. So now that I have this all penciled in as I was writing it, I need to ink it and make it look you know, not so scratchy, you know. And that's where you get into these guys, um, the Ames Lettering Guide. This is just about as old as print art in America can get. Um, they've probably been around for, for most of the 20th century. It's like one of the cheapest things you can buy in an art store. They're still just like three or four dollars. And I bought this one to do my first comic and it's never worn out. I bought a second one but I've never used it because <laughs> this one never broke. Um, they come with a um, little instruction booklet that reads like uh, a driver's manual for a space shuttle um, for parallel lines near two-thirds fraction at the desired mark on the frame way, two-thirds of the seconds, one-sixteenth, set your straight arrow parallel to, to aid in the forming letter, case letters, A, G, B, Y, use a fourth guideline of the second, fourth fractions, metric. Here's how you do this. If you want to get all this stuff, then it's simple. All you have to do is two-thirds ratio column with holes and the holes marked two-thirds figure three, two-thirds capitals to draw guidelines, three-sixteenth, six, three-six, thirty-second equals three-sixteenth, blah, 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 and set your sights for the nearest dark star. So, you know, you read that and you think, I'm not doing this. <laughs> so this sat in a drawer for a long time and I didn't know how to use them. And then finally I saw another artist do it and you can tell the lines that I use, the grid lines right there. And then there's a little mark here and as you turn this, it changes the height of the letters. So I figured out over time that what I like is number three. And if I do number three, it sets these guidelines on the right height. And this is just like when you're in your app on your computer uh, setting the letter height and the kerning between the rows. It's very physical. It's like the old school way of doing it. Like, this is how the cavemen did it. So, I have the paper on the drawing board. And unless you want your lettering to all be crooked or all over the place, nothing is quite square, then what I do is... I take the top of the page, which is up here. It's hard to show a vertical format on the horizontal screen. Oh, here. I'll undo this. I go to the top of the page, and then I set my T-square to get the page to be aligned with the T-square. And then I tape that down, and then from then on, uh, everything goes to the T-square the horizontals, and then when I use my, um, this guy, you know, but everything is now aligned. And the reason why that's helpful is that when I finish the page and it's time to scan it, um, I take the page and say that's the top of the glass screen on the scanner. I can now put this right up on the edge of the glass screen at the edge of the scanner. 
and the scanner will put all this in and it's already squared up on the on the computer screen and it'll be squared up on the printed page and it's just something you did real simple trick you did right when you started the art you know you just always align to the top of the page and then everything you do on the page after that lines up so now that it's time to letter I'm gonna do it again so this will be a little bit out of screen view but I'm aligning the top again and when I get it aligned, I tape it down and then pull in this little highly complex tool. Okay, here's one where there's more than, if you just do what the holes that are on there, you can get three rows. What do you do for something that needs more? This bottom hole starts the top of the next row. So you pull down, realign the top again, and start the next batch. Like that. There, I just lettered that whole, I mean, um, grid lined that whole panel. And you may say, Terry, why don't you just computer letter? Um, because computers are for writing manuals. And I like it that on the art, the, uh, the words are here on the art. So when I finish this page, you have a real page of comic art that you can read. The story is there. I get to do that because I'm, I'm uh, doing everything myself. Um, the Marvel way of somebody pencils, somebody inks, somebody letters, um, that's, that's a very good way to work. Um, but you know, you have different people for everything and they specialize in what they do. It's a very efficient way of making comics. I kind of just am old school and I just like to, I'm doing this the same way as if you were in college just drawing comics for the school newspaper, you know? Um, I just kind of like that earthy aspect to making comics. What you see is what you get. It takes a little more time, but I have time. I'll make time for it. Okay, so I'm going to reset up back over here and start lettering and uh, get this thing closer so you can see how I letter. I letter with micron pens because they don't bleed and I like them better than the Fable Faber-Castell pens, the black ones that you see commonly in Artist Alley. So um, I, made, I just made this little accordion thing so that I could separate between five and one and two, three, five, eight, and then a one. So I got tired of having to read the things every time I wanted to grab one. So my normal lettering I do with a .03 and since this is Zoe talking and she, whoops sorry I bumped the camera, she um, is being very understated and I know that I'm going to um, try to do this centered and I penciled it that way and that's just something you try to get a feel for the, the more you get used to lettering, the more you um, kind of figure out how you need to, where you need to put your words in order to get them centered. And then if I have something really off center, which happens every page, um, I realign it in Photoshop once I have it scanned. And I'm gonna go straight through the panel and just let her everything she says in this panel. And you can tell that the way I'm, I'm lettering, it's just exactly what they taught us how to do in first grade. <laughs> uh, 
I mean, it's just kind of embarrassing how simple it is, really. I'm just writing all caps, um, and I'm trying to have good penmanship, and it's just exactly like a first grade thing. So here's this sweet little girl saying something you've never seen a little girl say before. She's looking down at somebody on the ground. She's saying, you're still alive? Sorry about that. Would you like me to finish you off, or would you rather bleed out watching the snow fall? I may put fall there. Totally up to you. So, you, you know, laying on the ground, looking up at the snow, and it's this guy. And you see now that he has this massive sword in his chest, and he's bleeding out on the ground, watching the snow fall. And then she waxes eloquent about it and gets philosophical, and then brings it all back to the whole point of this issue uh, with a little punchline there. So that's the goal. Would you like? Mm. Why did I start over here? Because I know I have these words ahead of me and I'm hoping that it'll work out to be centered. Let's see if it does. Almost, yeah, that's pretty good. Um, okay, so the question now is, what if I make a mistake? How do I fix it? Um, if you put on whiteout, you have to wait almost, you know, till the next day before it's it's uh, dry enough to write on top of with these guys. If you put it down and then try to pen, uh, try to ink again in five minutes, it still have moist moisture in it. It won't work well. Um, so what I do. Or say I want to rewrite this entire line when I go back and read it. I use Avery multi-use labels. They're removable, which means I can pull one off. I mean, doesn't it look like you're working in the 1940s? So I'll do that and then I'll lay it on there again. And then I can see through the lines and I'll go, you know, new lettering. Yippee! You still alive? Yippee! And then you, there you are. That's how I make corrections. And I can do that on the entire thing. I've done everything on the page before as I go in and do a massive re edit. If I change my line and go back to the original, there it is. So, um,. Okay, I'm going to put it on time lapse and do the rest of the page, and you can see how it works out. That's how you do it. That's how your great, 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 great granddaddy did it. <laughs> so I feel like I'm making buggy whips here, but look at this. I mean, when I finish the page today, I'm gonna have the entire story on this one page with the little cryptic sayings and everything instead of just drawings that, you know. So I will have this actual moment captured in time on the page, and I just love that, and that's part of the joy of cartooning for me. So. If you're not lettering on your art, you might want to give it a try. I hope this helps. See you next week. Bye.